Hi there, I'm Richard Bopholtz with Law++. Plus Plus. Today I'm going to talk to you about one very specific portion of the default nonprofit Articles of Incorporation that the North Carolina Secretary of State has created. Now the North Carolina Secretary of State has these default articles, which are fine uh, as long as you don't care about 501c3 recognition. If you want 501c3 recognition, you're going to have to modify these articles slightly to make them uh, approved by the IRS in your 501c3 application. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about this one little box that says the organization has members or does not have members. So, so the problem I have with the members section is that it's not clear that a legal member under your articles is actually someone who has the say in how the corporation, the nonprofit corporation is run. So what that means in a real life example is that when we had when I had one client who wanted to get 501c3 recognition, they actually needed to bring in a vote of their members. Now they had about 200 members at the time, which means they had to get 100 of them in a room together to vote on whether or not they could move forward with the 501c3 recognition. Now we actually were able to get over 100 people into the room, which was a feat unto itself, uh, and they did vote to remove the membership portion from the articles, which then gave the board of directors the ability to run the organization and obtain 501c3. So that was a happy ending uh, for that story. There are other stories that aren't so happy. If you can't get the, the minimum quorum into a room together or onto an online meeting or however your bylaws state meetings can happen, then you're not going to be able to make the changes necessary to move forward with your organization. I have actually had multiple uh, organizations have to shut down because they just could not move forward. They either needed new board members or they needed to make structural changes that couldn't happen without the members. So why is this in there? Why is this in there at all? Because there actually are certain types of nonprofits that require members. So co-ops. Co-ops can have members because members need to vote on it, uh, on a, almost everything that the co-op does. Additionally, you have professional organizations that are run by uh, the members. And so those, it's important to have membership uh, on. But if you're just dealing with a charitable organization that you want run by a board of directors, then you can't have a membership requirement or it's gonna create an enormous hurdle for you to overcome anytime you want to make changes or appoint new board members. I'm Richard Bopples with Law++. Plus Plus. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe it, leave some comments, and I'll try to swing by and answer them if I can.